My dear brethren and friends, good morning. We're going to have the devotional today basing it on the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 16, 17, and 18, and the word of the Lord says, I was then walking in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh, for the flesh lost against the Spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that they, you do not know what the things you wish, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Once again, Paul, with the help of the Lord, inspired by the Holy Spirit, tries to show us, not only of his time, uh, the Christians in his time, but also to us through those wonderful precious letters that he wrote, that living in the flesh is to live against the will of God. To live in the Spirit is an evidence that we have had an encounter, an, an experience, a personal experience with Christ. What, what is to live in the flesh? To live in the flesh is the opposite of what God expects of his children. It's to live in disobedience, in rebellion, in pride, in arrogance, doing whatever we want without submitting to the Lordship of our God. It's to give free reign to our appetites and desires and impulses. On the contrary, to live in the Spirit is to live the life of Christ, to speak like Him, to think like Him, to act like Him, to react like him, like he used to. In other words, there is a great difference between living subjected to God, doing his will, manifesting each and every one of the areas of our life, the presence that we carry inside, that is nothing more and less and less than the presence of our God, and to live in the flesh, that is the life that everybody lives, giving uh, reign to selfishness, to greed, giving rise to bad words, to bad thoughts, reacting in a wrong way as never before the Lord Jesus Christ would do. So, the Lord expects changes that each and every one of us. Being a Christian is not a title. I am a Christian and then I do whatever I want to without submitting to the Word of God. Being a Christian means trying to imitate Christ and carry out a life of order, of daily discipline, subjected to Him, trying to imitate His example in everything, renouncing things that are unpleasant and authentic abominations in front of his eyes. And some will wonder, and how can I know what is that pleases God? Because I can know that some of you will practice and believing things that they think that they're correct, but it turns out that it's on the contrary. Well, once again, I have to say that because of that, the Lord left his word in writing the Bible. The word, the, the word of God is the heart of God. We find how God loves us and how God wants us to serve Him and love Him and, and honor Him every day of our lives. If we don't read the Bible, if we ignore the, sac the Holy Scriptures, then we will hardly know what is the will of God for our lives. This world, this society in which we live, is totally opposite to the life that God demands and asks of every one of us. We're not going to learn that in a, in a college or a school or anywhere how to please God, but rather the opposite, because the current, the style of, of this world, the principles, in quotes, of and the values, in quotes, of this world teaches to children from their earliest childhood in schools, in streets, etc., has nothing to do with what God has left us in writing his word. Therefore, we have to, to be clear that reading the word of God, to scrutinize the word of God is essential so that that way we are not mistaken and we are not practicing and believing things that in the end will not please our God. To live in the spirit is like Christ lived when he was in this world 2,000 years ago.
That's why in the Gospels and glory to God, we have not one, but four, Ma Matthew, Mark, Lucas, and John. And we found how he treated the people who accused him, that persecuted and, and criticized him. We find how he treated the people who love him and the people who hated him. We know how he uh, behaved, how the character, his character was and his personality and all of that he expects from each one of us that we also live like his, child, his son lived when he was here. My dear brethren, the life in the spirit is the life that pleases God. The life in the flesh is the evidence that we have not understood the gospel and that we have not been born again. That is why being a Christian is much more than a title. Being a Christian is living as Christ lived. I know that some will wonder or will think in loud voice, but that is impossible in the flesh, of course. How can we live a life of order and holiness being as we are? Well, we don't have any other choice but to submit to the Lord and surrender every day of our lives to the Lord so that he, our mind will be transformed, our vocabulary, our way to react. All, it's just a discipline. It's a life. It, we are in a process, a process that lasts all our lives. But with the help of God and putting our, uh, doing our part and surrendering Him every day, we're going to be able to please him. So let's not invent a Christian life our own way, but let's go to the pages of the Bible. There is everything very clear, very well specified in writing so that no one has to invent anything, so that no one has to learn based on errors and mistakes, but that you will discover the real principles, the moral that God has left us so that we can have homes of blessing and peace so that our lives will not be a life full of problems and difficulties constantly but that in the middle of that society totally antagonic against the word of god we will be like he said the light the salt of the earth to make a difference in our work in our job, in our families, that our private life and our public life to be a life pleasing to the world, to the Lord. So that's why we don't need to be living under the law, because in the law of Moses, you did not live in the spirit, but it was our constant effort of men to try to please God. And that's why they fail, because every attempt that we make ourselves in our own ego, in our own strength, will be in vain. So our willpower has a limit, but we do not live or do not try to live pleasing God in our own strength, but in the Spirit of God, guided and impulsed by the, the Holy Spirit. And whatever we do, we have, we don't have, He has. And our strength, when they run out, He renews the, that strength. So we don't live under that constant pressure of the law, but in the freedom of the gl glorious freedom of the children of God, knowing that this battle and knowing that this daily journey, we're not alone, but that he's by our side, supporting us, strengthening us, uh, anointing us so that we can please the Lord every day with our words and with our actions. My dear brethren, let's pray, asking the blessing of God, that he will accompany us and guide us in every, in every moment and everything that we do. Blessed Heavenly Father, we give you infinite thanks for the privilege of being called your children, for knowing that we are the dwelling of your Holy Spirit, that you guide us, that you teach us, that you will correct us, that you exhort us, and that you, we are not alone. And we ask you, Lord, that you help us to change, to better our style of living, our behavior, in a way that we're not guided by our emotions, by our feelings, our impulses, that are from the flesh, but only guided by you and only you and by your spirit. We put our lives and this day in your hands with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, my dear brethren, may the Lord bless you. We're going to enjoy our communion and our relationship with the Lord, making an effort, of course, but always depending on him, because with him, we're going to have a constant and permanent victories. Don't get discouraged if at any time in your life you fail the Lord and you stumble and you fall. Well, learn to get up, to be restored by the Lord, 
and keep in mind that the Lord is still with us, guiding and helping us, and there is a, still a long way to go. May the Lord bless you, and may you have a happy day. Blessings.